Praise the Lord. I'm going to have an interpreter today. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Who here is happy to be in church? Say amen. Amen. God is good, right? These are wonderful testimonies that we heard, right? Wonderful songs we're singing. And God is very good to us. You know, and He... All he desires is for you to know him, for you to get to know his will, to grow to, today, and to give him praise. You know, today I have a message, and I would like to deliver it to you, um, but I truly feel, I feel God's presence here today, and so I would like to, I'm going to try to keep this message shorter, so that we can have a, a time to pray. If you can open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5. We've been going through the Beatitudes. And we are on verse, verse 9. And we have, after this, we only have one more to go. And then we'll go through the rest of what God has put on my heart. <laughs> Amen. Right, in verse, uh, so... Matthew chapter 5 verse 9 Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the sons of God So today I had this situation So I was at work and I had a, a, a person there that I he, like he, I work with him and today he was frustrated <laughs> a lot of packages a lot of stops and I could tell he's really frustrated and then so when we go into when we went together to go get our map for the day um, I, we had a conversation the day before so I brought it up in a way to where I'm like hey man like it, it's going to be okay you know <laughs> so, so he turns to me and he says, Hey, just because you're bigger than me, <laughs> doesn't mean I can't knock you out. <laughs> I'm like, what? What? <laughs> he said, yeah, you know, just because you're bigger than me, I, doesn't mean I can't knock you out. So, so you really want to fight? <laughs> like, <laughs> I just started laughing about it. But then he's, and, I, and then he's like, no, I don't want to fight. I'm just frustrated, this and that. But you know, what's funny is today we're going to be talking about peacemakers. <laughs> and the Bible says that blessed are the peacemakers. You know, in that moment I had two decisions. <laughs> to act the way I acted. Uh, well, I said, let's go. Or could have said, let's, 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 you know. But thank God I, I acted the way that the Lord wants me to. Amen. Praise God. You know, we're talking about being peacemakers, okay? And as young people, do you think this is relevant to us? Yes. It does. Because the scriptures are relevant to every one of us. And so, you know, in this world we have a lot of conflict. If you listen to the news, it's 99% negative. Conflict after conflict, problem after problem. You know, yeah, people are just in a way like you know, kind of losing it. Some people are just, they don't have any peace. Some people are just full of fear. Families, uh, you know, are in problems with each other. There's a lot of division going on in these last days. A lot of problems going on. And the thing is, there were problems going on in Jesus' time. And Jesus, in that time, and in 
and this time he says one thing to us. Blessed are the peacemakers because they shall be called the sons of God. The, Jesus wants you to be a peacemaker. Jesus wants you to walk into a situation and bring peace into that situation. You know, have you, who here has ever witnessed a fight? Nice. Got it? Okay, well, <laughs> girls too. And who here has seen a fight where there's two guys going at it or two girls fighting or clawing each other? And somebody has to run in and break it up, break it up, right? <laughs> What's so fun? Okay, somebody's breaking up the fight. You know, there's probably some fights where, you know, the person that was getting beat up was very thankful for that peacemaker. That ran in there and grabbed both of them by the shirts or whatever, pulled them off each other. And said, hey guys, cut it out, knock it off. You know, Jesus in a way calls us to be those kind of people. And today we're going to talk about what it means to actually be this peacemaker. And what are some practical ways you and I can be those peacemakers. As young people in the 21st century. So what is peace? What is peace? What does that mean? A calm spirit. So let's say, when a person is peaceful, what are we talking about? Or mirny. His conscience doesn't bother him. A peaceful, okay, let's say, what does it mean? Okay, what do you guys picture a, a peacemaker doing besides breaking up a fight? Helping what? Not being involved in the fight? <laughs> yeah, we don't want to do that either, yeah. Humbling themselves? Peace is only given by God. True peace is of God. You guys agree? Who, who here has ever seen where it says, with the, okay, K-N-O-W, no Jesus. Okay, go. Okay, well, okay, and, 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 oh, no, Jesus. So, no, Jesus, no peace, look with the K, or with just an N, no, Jesus, and no peace. Who's heard that before? So, without Jesus, there's truly no peace. Okay? And Paul, you're right about that. Yeah, Paul, you're right, yeah. <laughs> That without Jesus, we cannot experience true peace. Only because of Jesus, we can be peacemakers. Who here remembers uh, in the Old Testament, one of the names of Jesus? About this topic we're talking about. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6, right? Mighty God, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He is the one that grants peace. He is the one that came from heaven and, and gave us peace into our life. Peace between us and God the Father so that we can have peace in, within ourselves. Here I, I found a little like uh, explanation of what biblical peace is. So bi biblical peace is more than just the absence of conflict or state of rest. It means completeness or wholeness and it points to the presence of something else. So that's Jesus. So who knows the, the Hebrew word for peace? Shalom, Shalom. right? So when, when, when uh, Jewish people greet each other, they say Shalom. They don't say, hey, good morning. They don't say, sup. They say, Shalom. And the person says shalom. Yeah, that's right, right? Yeah, yeah. You were there. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not making it up. No. Shalom. Shalom, yeah. 
let's let's go through a few places in the Bible where we see Jesus doing the very same thing we're talking about. And then we could talk about what we can do as Christians or as peacemakers. Okay, a few verses. John 16.33. This is what Jesus is saying. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Сказал я вам, чтобы вы имели во мне мир. В мире будете иметь скорб, но мужайтесь. Я победил мир. John 14:27. Jesus says. Иисус говорит. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Мир оставляю вам, мир мой даю вам. Не так как мир дает, я даю вам. Да не смущается сердце ваше и да не устрашается. So Jesus has left us something. He's left us peace. And he wants every single one of us to have this peace within ourselves. If you do not know Jesus, you will have no peace. Your life is going to be a disaster. Jesus said, in this world, you will have problems. Jesus says, in this world, you will have conflicts with people. You are going to go into difficult situations. But be of good cheer. Be encouraged. For this one thing. I have overcome the world. And I am the Prince of Peace. And I can give peace to those who ask him. Amen. Let's read another place. John 20, verse 19. This is after his resurrection. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, uh, were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came in and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you, or shalom. В тот же первый день недели вечером, когда двери дома, где собрались ученики его, были заперты от запасения этой идеи, пришел Иисус и стал посреди и говорит им: Мир вам. You guys, when we look at Jesus' life, everywhere he went, Jesus not only brought joy, he didn't only show, express the power of the Holy Spirit, he also brought peace. He came into this room to these disciples. Imagine seeing somebody after that, you know, that thing that happened after he died and rose from the dead. They were so devastated. They were so down. They were so depressed. That they wanted to go back and live their normal life. Jesus, the first thing he does when he sees them, he says, peace to you. Peace to you. That's what they needed to hear in that moment. They didn't, they, didn't, they didn't need to hear something else or some kind of, you know, wise saying. There was something troubling their spirit and Jesus knew what to say. He said, peace to you. You know, and you might be here too. You are here, okay? But you might also have a, a problem. Jesus says, peace to you. You know, when we're going to be praying, I believe the Holy Spirit will say, peace to you. Because I am here. You know, one time I was going through a hard situation. I still, I lived out in Kentucky in this time. And it had so much going on in my mind. You know, the devil was torturing me with a a lot of thoughts. I had a lot of questions to God. For God. There were so many things that I didn't understand. And I remember when I, uh, I actually put a need to this uh, woman of God. And I just wanted to get an answer from the Lord of what's going on in my life. And I remember, so I called her up and she said, okay, I'm going to pray, I'm going to call you when I get an answer from the Lord. And so about a few days later, you know, I get, we get the call and I, I uh, so, so the call was recorded. And she said, okay, I was praying. And this is what God is telling you. Peace to you. 
Peace be to you. Peace to you. Mir va, mir and I remember when I heard those words. Я понял, когда услышал эти слова. I was I started weeping. I, I understood. Those are the words that I needed to hear from him. After he said Mir Tibia. Then he only explained what I, what next I need to do. You know, guys, we need to hear these words today from the Holy Spirit. Because to be a peacemaker in these days, you yourself need to be at peace. You yourself need to have peace in your mind. You need to have peace in your heart. You need to be a, a peaceful in the, every situation of your life. Because that is the working of the Holy Spirit. You know, when James talks about wisdom, it says, first of all, God's wisdom, it's pure. And it says, peaceable. It's God, when God gives wisdom, he gives peace with his wisdom. One of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the, the one of the attributes of God is peace. Look at it. Love, joy, peace. A person that is filled with the Holy Spirit is filled with peace. It's not just a peace that, like Jesus said, not like the world gives. It's not just a high of some sort that lasts a little while and it fades away. But Jesus says, I leave you my peace. Peace I give to you. And he says, I give you my shalom. I give you what's complete and what's whole. Listen, when your life is broken and falling apart, there is no shalom there. There's no peace there. But when the Holy Spirit comes and starts making, bringing a work into your life, things start getting completed. Broken hearts become mended. Addictions start to fade. Fears go away. Because God is giving you his peace. Amen. This is what God given us. And this is what God wants us to have. So let's talk about how do I become a peacemaker? You become a peacemaker by being like Jesus. You know, not once in my life when I was going through a very hard time, when there's a lot of questions, and, and I knew that God was with me, no matter what I would face, I could face it with faith. Nothing scares you when you're walking with the Lord. There is nothing that troubles you when you're walking with Jesus. There is no addiction that can hold you back from Jesus when he's with you. That is what he wants to give us. So to be a peacemaker, I need to be like Jesus. So let's talk about what it means to bring peace or be a peacemaker. So I've got two points. So we make peace between man and God by preaching the gospel. We do what Jesus did for us. We, he reconciled us back to God. There was something broken because of sin. Jesus came and he restored that relationship with God when we allowed him to. And when we, we, when we've experienced that in our own lives, a Christian cannot be silent at that moment. You know, sometimes I worry about Christians, about young people, about older people, that when they say, I follow Jesus, but are yet too 
you ashamed to open their mouth and tell somebody about him? To tell them about the love of Jesus. To tell them about the peace that Jesus gives. Not like the world gives. So to be a peacemaker first and foremost. You tell people about Jesus. Wherever you go. Your life. Your words. Your actions. Bring peace. And restore people. The second way we can be a peacemaker. Here's the second point. By being someone who brings peace between two people. All right. So to be a peacemaker, to reconcile two people who are fighting or be the peacemaker in a problem when it, when it has you involved. Yeah, between you and somebody else. You know, a lot of, who here has ever been in an argument or in a fight? Come on, come on, come on. Okay, yes, all of us, all of us, all of us. Who here has, you can remember at least one time where you should have let it go, could have let it go, could have been the peacemaker, but you weren't. Amen. Amen. Who here remembers the time where they were the person that says, hey, let's just for the sake of peace, let's let this go. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. That is a peacemaker. You know, there are two types of people we can be. We can be a troublemaker. Or we can be a peacemaker. Jesus wants you to be a peacemaker. Sometimes, uh, you know, it takes for us to bite our tongue. And to say, okay. Especially when it comes to parents, with our siblings, with the people in church. You know, Jesus wants you to be a peacemaker. You know, when we're talking about peace, we're talking about, it's, it's not just one uh, attribute. It's, it's like we're talking about the completeness. It's, it's a variety of attributes. It's joy. It's kindness. It's love. You know, and Jesus says, uh, everybody's going to know that you are my followers. When you do what? When you love each other. If you are a person that people know you by constantly causing trouble. You are not representing Jesus. You are representing your stubborn sinful character. Amen. But when you are a peacemaker and filled with the Holy Spirit. Wherever you go, whatever conversation you have, I, I get it, it's hard at times. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, God will help you bring that change into your life. To be that peacemaker. You know, there is enough trouble in this world. There is enough people that tell you you're not good enough, complaining all the time. There's not enough peacemakers. There's not enough people filled with the peace of God. But God wants us to be those people. Amen. God wants you to be that person that reconciles people. You know, the Bible says it is better to have a good name than to have a lot of riches. Your reputation, how people see you, how God sees you, is more important than money, than any kind of riches, than any kind of material things that you can own. You can meet the poorest person in this world, but he can be the richest in his spirit. Amen. He can be the richest as a Christian. 
And the Bible says there is a, an abundance of treasures hidden in Jesus Christ. And when you're digging for those treasures in prayer, when you read the word, those treasures are going to be in your life. Amen. So in the second part of this verse, so it says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. You know, there are two types of dads in this world. When it comes to their children. So there are dads that are proud of their children. When somebody says, hey, is that your boy or is that your daughter? They can say, yeah. yeah but say with pride, like, yeah, he's doing good. And then there's a second type of dad. Where somebody can, hey, is that your son? Is that your daughter? Yeah, that's my son, that's my daughter. Because he's ashamed of what they're doing. Because he doesn't like what they're doing. I'm going to ask you this. If, if I was to ask you, how does God look at you right now as a father? What would he say about you? Would he say, yes, that is my child? He's doing good. Yeah, he falls. Or she falls. She's stumbling. But they're trying. That is my child. I'm proud of them. Or does he say, well, I don't know. We don't have really a relationship. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're up to. You know, I want God to look at my life and to say, well done, to call me his child. There is no better promotion in this world than to be called a child of God. To be a child of God is the highest thing you can achieve. And he says here, if you are a peacemaker, you are my child. Because you have the DNA of Jesus in you. You, you're acting like I would act. You're treating people like you would want to be treated. You love like Jesus loved. I got two more verses for you guys and we'll wrap it up. Romans chapter 12 verse 18. It says, if it is possible as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. You might think, all men, all people? We have somebody that comes into our mind, I don't know if I could do with that person. The Bible says you're supposed to try. If it is possible from your side, live peaceably with people. Bring that peace into that environment. Bring peace into that relationship. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Here it says, Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Isn't that interesting? Peace is tied in with holiness. Peace, holiness, together. The Bible, Jesus says, be holy. But he also says, have peace. Be a peacemaker. And you will be a child of God. That's pretty much the sermon. Does that make sense? You know, guys, and right now we're going to pray. You know, and like I mentioned a little bit earlier in the beginning of the sermon, that wherever Jesus went, peace was brought into that home into that village into that situation into that relationship into that sinful state 
Many kinds of people met Jesus. And when somebody would accept Jesus as him as a whole, everything that he gives is shalom. He gave them freedom. He gave them peace. He gave them an answer. He gave them a victory. Where Jesus is, there is freedom. And the Bible says where the Holy Spirit of God is, there is freedom. Nothing has changed in the last 2,000 years. Amen. Jesus is still alive. And he wants to give you his peace. So that you can be a vessel that can peace with you so that you can go and change the situation so that you can uh, affect this world so that you could bring a change into this world for the kingdom of God amen and today we're going to pray maybe you don't have this peace or maybe you have this peace and it was gone Today is a day to receive it. Amen. Today the Holy Spirit is willing to pour out this peace upon us. You know, I'm thinking about my life right now and I need His peace. I need more of the Holy Spirit. I need freedom in my life. I need freedom in my thoughts. I need victory in my life. It comes with the power of the Holy Spirit. It comes where Jesus is. Is. And Jesus is here today. Amen. So if you'd like to get prayed for, you come, come on out. And all of us, guys, let's, let's just get um, united in the Spirit. Pray for one another. And see what God will do. Amen.